This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Transformations with Tara Sutphin. Tara Sutphin is the author of Blame It on Your Past Lives, Soul Agreements, and The Abenda Chronicles. Grammy-nominated audios, videos, and MP3 series. You can find these MP3 series now at TaraInsight.com. Hello, and welcome to Transformations with Tara Sutphin. I, of course, am not Tara Sutphin. I am Jason D. McKean, and I am her guest host today. And with me, I have the fantastic Dr. Steve G. Jones. And Dr. Steve, you are a clinical hypnotherapist. You've been practicing since the 80s. How is that possible? <laughs> I started when I was two, Jason. I was, uh, I was a very gifted child. Is that what the parents saying? I am going to stay up till midnight. I am going to stay up till midnight. I'm going to eat all the candy <laughs> I want to eat. And I'm going to inherit all of your money when I am five. Yes, it all worked out. Um, you, you are an author. You, you have 22 books. I mean, that's something that you've been writing since age two, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically started a Goo Goo Gaga hypnosis. Goo Goo Gaga. That's kind of how, they, <laughs> how most of them read until I get to like seven or so. So seven, that is. With, with, uh, with writing books, right? Is it, um, do you feel that there is a, a common thread that runs through all of them or, uh, you know, like, like most uh, artists, like Picasso went through his blue period and, you know, the uh, other uh, uh, epochs, you know, do, do you find that, that you're building on knowledge that you've already uh, accumulated? Uh, kind of, yes. Um, I, I can't uh, attest to being as cool as Picasso or uh, I never thought of having epochs before, but from now on, I'm going to. As you um, get older... Right. Yes. As, as, as people start uncovering the layers, you know, within you, as far as uh, <laughs> that, yep, there are many can have epochs epochs. to be discovered. Yeah. I'm, I'm pocked with the epoch marked with epochs. I'm sure I've just got to discover them. But I think that um, uh, concerning my uh, answer right now, uh, having not considered that or delved uh, as you, as you mentioned that I, which I will be doing, um, Kind of what happened is I had a lot of uh, material and I, I, I got it all out uh, in uh, a number of books. And so all the material I was kind of building up over the years, a lot of my books are just hypnosis scripts, hypnosis deepenings, um, things like that. So I had all of this knowledge in my, in my head and I just slowly over a number of years released it. And then I have released new uh, uh, books since then, uh, the power of thin with Frank Mangano, a friend of mine and my business partner, and, uh, you can attract it, which when the law of attraction started becoming a thing, we used to call it just manifestation. You know, I'm going to manifest this. Then the law of attraction came along in like 2004 ish, somewhere in there. So, uh, then, so we wrote a book called you can attract it around that time. And so, uh, yes, Jason, many epochs, too many to name any epochs ago so yeah. so there is uh with with your your writings and all there there's a uh, uh they pretty much stick to the the field of uh either hypnotherapy or or programming um right. uh setting the stage within oneself right to to be able to uh, manifest that which you desire i mean it Jason, I'm going to write everything down that you're saying because your answers are outstanding. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I would have said. Well, you know, as as a counselor myself, you know, it's like there there are like go to places, right? Just to boil it down, to simplify it um, and, and to, you know, take any um, uh, of that kind of cosmic essence out of it. All right. Any any phraseology that that might be, you know, just kind of out there or too specific to a certain practice or, or tradition or something, but to to kind of bring it into just kind of plain speak. Right. It's like P 
people, they, they want what they want, right? It's like, how do I go about getting it? That is true. And yeah, when you, I mean, you, when you boil the essence of everything down that we're doing, the Terra does that you do that, you know, I do, it is all about, you know, helping people. And so when you do take out all the jargon that's specific to uh, one train of thought or one um, discipline, then it's all the same stuff. You know, you, you're here, you want to be here. Here's how you do it. Yeah. And, and being able to, um, with, with hypnosis, because it, it is a, a way of, of looking to bypass any, any parts of our conscious mind that might be the uh, uh, parts that self-sabotage or, um, you know, it's, it's like we can give ourselves like this. Yeah, I, I want to be a, a rock and roll star, but that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. But it's like to, to like... Um, you know, maybe activate a part of oneself where it's like music is a, is a big part of one's life. It doesn't have to be where you like, you know, make it to the toppermost of the poppermost, but, but where you're, you're finding fulfillment in uh, activating natural abilities, talents, gifts, you know, you're, you're, you know, enjoying life. Yeah, that's really it. I call it the Forrest Gump mentality, or what you're uh, talking about there, like in the movie Forrest Gump. I know it's fiction, but you know, this guy was. Was it? Oh, sorry, Jason. No, it was real. It was real. I saw the footage. All right. Yes. It yeah, was real I footage. Saw, <laughs> I saw it on, on uh, the big screen and even on the internet. So it must be real and true. Yes. Sorry. Uh, what was I saying? That's blasphemy. So Forrest Gump is true, as we know. And because it's true, we can learn from it. And one of the things we learned from it was this guy was too stupid to know that he couldn't, you know, run across the country and run back or play ping pong at a professional or Olympic type level or disassemble a gun and reassemble it faster than anyone in his uh, military uh, group there. So because of being, you know, quote unquote, too stupid to quote from the movie uh, to know these, know that he couldn't do these things. He didn't have limitations. So if we could become more like Forrest Gump, uh, who is a real character, then um, we could have these abilities as well. And that's what hypnosis does. It helps you eliminate what you were talking about, which we call the critical factor, which is that factor that says, you know, I, I can't uh, be a superstar or musician or what have you uh, because of this and that. We have all these reasons uh, that we can't do it. So if we can get rid of those, which we do with hypnosis, then we we're more, you know, clear for takeoff. Is it about accessing the, the subconscious or, you know, when I'm reading Tarot, <clears throat> I'm looking at like uh, the spirit uh, center, uh, the, you know, these other intelligence centers that, that one possesses, you know, cause there's, it breaks it down into mind, body, spirit, and emotions. And, you know, there can be absolutely like kind of more of a scientific, uh, you know, method of, of looking to see how hypnosis goes, uh, you know, past the, the, the conscious uh, thinking and into the subconscious it is, uh, is our subconscious, is it uh, unlimited? Is, is it like, like stupid, right? Or just unknowing, right? It's like, well, I don't know if I can do that. Maybe I can do that, um, you know, where, where it's maybe just a little bit more um, just willing to like, yeah, let's try it and see what happens. You know, what, what's what, what do you feel? Yeah, I, I think it's potentially all of those things. Uh, it is uh, unlimited in, in many senses of the word. It is certainly unknown. Uh, it is something it's, it's sort of like a like a computer. You know, you just program something in the computer doesn't have a sense of, well, I uh, can do this or can't do this or I want to do this or I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it just uh, accepts what you program in. That's what the subconscious mind is like. And because of that, uh, it's got far more capacity for achievement than we do in our, you know, prefrontal, uh, highly evolved brain that figures out every, re every reason why we can't do something because this will never work because of that. And this will never work because of that. It doesn't have any of that. It just has the acceptance. And if we can tap more into that, we find that we are uh, far more successful. All right. And so getting into that, that area of, of our being and to, 
to be able to program it with things that that we know that we're we're, we're wanting to uh, move through. Let's let's say it's a phobia. It's like you you have like uh, um, how many uh, programs do you have, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have nine, about 9,000 different audios, but they really only cover about 230 or so topics. And we do cover a lot of phobias, fear of snakes, fear of spiders, fear of flying. Uh, yes, fear of, yes. You have Sna snakes, <laughs> rats, <laughs> you know. That, yeah, that, sometimes, uh, they're good, sometimes they're good fears. I mean, you don't want to go play with every snake you, uh, you find, and you certainly don't want to yeah. pet every rat you, you see. Right. You, you think it's going to have negative outcomes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you, you know fear of flying um you, you know with the uh the, the the pandemic you know that uh that hit over you know okay, now it's been like a year and a half right pretty much uh did you um did you create like uh any specific programming for uh people to to cope with um with the, the the lockdown you know it's whether it's like uh you know a fear of uh loneliness or you know anything like that i didn't create any new hypnosis audios during the pandemic i haven't uh, uh done any specific pandemic uh type audios the reason for that is i didn't think it had longevity i didn't you know, I didn't think we'd be in the pandemic uh, type lockdown forever, but who knows, maybe it's coming back, maybe we will, <laughs> but I should re revisit that. But um, yeah, there was a lot of requests for that. We just referred people to things we already had, um, you know, like confidence, for example, we have a hypnosis audio for that, motivation, you know, stay motivated, might as well work on something while you're stuck at home. Yeah, that that's what, uh, you know, I, I did after, um, about a month, I had an opportunity to teach a a specific uh, class that was geared towards, uh, you know, like like not not succumbing to to fear, right? Like that was the the basis of it. And then, um, you, you know, looking to see if there was uh, a new part of yourself that was starting to blossom, that you could use the 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 time that was allotted to a, a lot of people like uh, you know because it was like uh everyone was just zipping along at a million miles an hour and then all of a sudden er, you know the, the brakes <clears throat> you know were were thrown on for a lot of people and it's like you know there, there's a, a choice then it's like okay now what am i going to do with this this time once once you kind of like kind of start wrapping your head around you know this this isn't just a temporary thing this is going to be something that's that's kind of ongoing and and so um, you know, allowing for uh, you know people to go into that meditative state and to start connecting with what's next. If if there's a part of themselves that's uh, saying, yeah, now's the time. This is the opportunity to to start learning something new, to start projecting a new sense of self into the world. Um, and and that's uh, that that was like uh has been very helpful for for people who um you know don't just want to like catch up on their 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 netflix right and just watch every series ever made you know um I, there's a time and a place for that right but uh you know our, our our lives are are important and and when we're um connecting with our own purpose our own sense of, of meaning it's like you know this it's a uh time in history that it doesn't happen a lot where the whole world just can kind of like you know come to a screeching halt there and and where we can um activate another you know part of ourself you know that that might be be calling us to to go forward yeah i think a lot of people uh activated something new and, and a lot of people don't want to go back to quote unquote normal you know they don't want to go back to the office sometimes the office doesn't want to have them back because it was too expensive to have them at the office and the office realized sure. they can save a lot of money by having them at home so uh yeah a lot of things changed and a lot of uh new careers launched and i'm sure we'll find out it might be you know five or ten years from now but we'll we'll you know something new will happen some new superstar will a arrive on the scene and and they'll say yeah well i got this idea back during the pandemic when i was locked down for a year and i decided 
why not cure a cancer or <laughs> why not build robots that can walk on Mars? So I started working on it. You know, it's going to be stuff like that. So all kinds of stuff, big and little, you know, for the individual, it's all big. So everyone had their, their, their big change uh, for them. And uh, it's been fascinating. It's, it's hard to say that the pandemic, you know, has been a good thing, but uh, you know, you, you try to see the silver lining and everything. And the, there's some, there's some good stuff that actually has uh, come out of it. Yeah, well, it's it's like the the course of human history is is not an easy path, you know. It's like it right. it's it's filled with its challenges. It's uh, had its its joys and its suffering, you know. It's it's a broad mix, and it's like the 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 person who uh, who recognizes a a sense of empowerment for themselves to be able to to step into uh, uh, a a role of who it is that they're they they're looking to be you know where it's like they they want to uh activate a, a an identity or they they want to get uh past something right i mean it's like when when they're in that that place of making that that choice it's like you know there are um there are tools available through hypnosis through through programming to 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 be that extra push right it doesn't have to um it doesn't have to inform the entire person, you know, but it, it can, it can be that, that helpful nudge that, that gets someone up in, in the, in the morning and they're like, yes, I'm doing this. And, and they, they start activating it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it and that's great to look at the positive side of it there, you know, there were, we, we should pay respect to the, uh, the fact that there were a lot of negative outcomes from the lockdown. A lot of people started drinking more and, you know, became drug addicts and uh, suicides went up. So there was a lot of negative, but for those who uh, use that time as you're talking about and used it constructively, perhaps those people who, who are more, you know, like that anyway, who, who think in those terms, like, like you and I do, for example, um, they use that to actually make improvements. Um, I can say for me personally, it wasn't much of a change because I live like a hermit anyway. I, I hardly interact with, uh, with people. I, you know, I interact with friends like yourself, but uh, I, I live uh, a very hermit-like life. So for me, it hardly had any impact at all. I just kept on doing what I do. But I was, I was really fascinated to see a lot of uh, hypnotherapists, for example, lose their in-person clients. A lot of, you know, every kind of therapist lose their in-person clients and have to move to an online situation, which I've been doing for over 10 years just because I prefer to, you know, live like a hermit. So uh, they, they started doing it. And I, I encouraged them to, uh, to stay that path, even when you can go back to normal, you know, why don't you stay uh, as a person doing things online, you can reach a whole lot more people that way, first of all, and your life will be more pleasant. But then again, uh, looking at the other side of that, uh, there are people who do seminars, you know, who enjoy being out with the public, you know, they're kind of like performers who feed off of the energy of the people in person, and they don't want to be by themselves, you know, so those, those folks really suffered, and they can't wait to get back to their, their seminars. But uh, yeah, we had a mixed bag, but I, I like, I like the, the idea that you're looking on the good side here. If you're a hermit, where's your, like your long beard and you know, your, uh, do, do, uh, like a, your, your fingernails out and all that, or. Yeah. I got to work on that. You, you don't have the fingernail thing going on. Do you? Yeah, no, You're, no, not so much. Yeah. I, um, I'll let mine go like a week or two, but then they, then they start annoying me a little bit. So I'm not a good hermit in that respect. And I don't think I could get a full beard. I think I got like the, the goatee. So maybe I could do the, the goatee. I don't know. Is that hermit? Like, is that, does that work? You, you do what you can. Okay, I'll do, you know, in right. my mind, I have that, I kind of see I do this, and yeah, I have a, you can't, maybe if you, you know, I, I see it, I don't know if you see it, but I, I see it as I look at myself, I see my hermit yeah. essence. I, I, I don't feel threatened at all. By, okay, by, uh, yeah, your beard is always going to be, it's not a competition, bigger, and that, that's, okay. well, I'm, and I'm okay with that, I'm okay with we're both evolved enough to be okay with the right. way reality is. Right. Thank you for bringing that up, Doctor Doctor Jones, Doctor Steve G. Jones. Um, what's your website? SteveGJones.com. And on on the website, it's like you have all nine thousand programs. 
not all 9,000. We made it simpler so we didn't uh, cause any short circuiting in anyone's brain when they look at it. Like, right. what the heck am I supposed to do? I came here for help. <laughs> now I'm more confused than ever. <laughs> we, we streamlined it. We streamlined right. it. So right. it's stevegjones.com. You'll find a, uh, a selection of what I consider the top hits, the things that are most effective. And of course, the uh, you and I did a, a program together. That's right. That's right. We were, uh, uh, it's like a, a, a duo, right? It's like you were like uh, uh, voicing suggestions. I was oming right next to you. It was, yeah. it was great. It was like summer loving. Kind of like. <laughs> a, duo, yeah. a duo of that caliber. Uh, but, yeah, we, we could have done some of the, uh, the, the, you know, variety shows. Yeah, we did. No, it, it wasn't. It was, we're it was on, a, uh, we're on, uh, what's that? I was trying to think of a show that's no longer on the air. <laughs> what, think, like Sonny and Cher? Well, I was thinking of a, like a show that, a show that they would be on, like if they went on a variety show, but yeah, I guess Sonny and Cher was a variety show. Wasn't the it? Ed Sullivan show. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of the Ed Sullivan show. Yes, you know? yes, <laughs> yeah, something and that's. Next uh... <laughs> we have the Ohm brothers. It's like yeah. my my ohms have have been out there for for many many years, and, and I've and, used uh, them with clients. Yeah, Doctor Steve um, had the the brilliant idea of like combining his uh, his mastery with the hypnosis and the programming, and uh, with the the ohm underneath it, and uh, it's very very powerful. And, and spiritual too, right? As far as like, there's some some pretty rocking uh, spiritual titles. Oh yeah, we yeah, we covered all the uh, all the bases. We've got a lot of uh, different uh, topics for people having different challenges, the normal challenges that we all that we all face. You know, wanting more confidence, more motivation, that kind of thing. But uh, I should say that back when I had my office in Beverly Hills, nine hundred two one zero, the Roxbury Medical Building, I was working with a lot of celebrity clients. I purchased and used with my clients your own recordings, your various own recordings. And mm -hmm. the clients love them. Uh, one thing they'd always say is, can I, can I just get the own recording without your voice on it? <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I probably think <laughs> countless customers your way. Got to get that annoying voice off of there. But uh, we found a way to combine my voice with your own recordings in a in a more pleasant way that people actually enjoy and that's what we put together and uh yeah that was a real honor to work with you jason thank you for for allowing me that honor yeah no it's it's uh likewise you know i uh i'm just pleased as punch you know to be able to uh, uh facilitate like more and more healing in the world too you know it's like um you know something like the ohm it's not something that that is mine you know, I didn't, I didn't write it. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't copyright. Oh, I, that's mine. But to be able to intone it and, and create a, a sacred space with it, that's, uh, that's a, that's a blessing. And, um, and I'm, I'm just happy to be a, a part of that. And, and it does help a lot of people. Um, and, it, and it has for, God, it's like my, my first one is like 30 years old now. Really? Yeah. It's wow. Older, it's I, older than you. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I'm only when I was two when I started doing hypnosis and that was a few years ago. So yeah, gosh, I can't 30. That's old. Those right. 30 year olds. <laughs> oh, wow. Life must be over at that point. Jeez. It, it starts to like, uh, you know, feel thin, I think. Yeah. At 30. Boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, you, like you were talking about how like, uh, during the, the last year or so, you know, you, it's like you've uh, you've already been acclimated to the digital, to the the online, and uh, what what's like uh, it, what's happened is that people were forced to accept the the online to if if they wanted to um, you know go to class if they wanted to uh, socialize then it was like oh you know figuring out how to work Zoom. And all, uh, or you know, any of the the social platforms there, or meeting platforms, mm -hmm. and uh, so w with that in mind, as far as do you have uh, any plans for uh, s seminars? Do you have anything coming up that is like um, you know you're you're able to engage with with others in either a teaching manner where you're you're teaching um, hypnotherapy 
Uh, I, I know that our producer, Cameron, here at CTR Network, he, he is a like a card carrying member or a certificate. Uh, he's got a plaque on his wall that he's he's graduated from a Dr. Steve G. Jones um, seminar or so. I, I have heard about that. There's word on the street. I was hearing before we started, we were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. We haven't seen the evidence, but we accept his word because he is a good person. Yes. But uh, yeah, we, we do have certification programs like like the one that uh, Cameron took. We have 22 different certification programs. Uh, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Is that because 22 is a master number is that you have 22 <laughs> books? I'm a master builder. So I built 22. Yeah, you, you have 22 books. You I have 22. I was stop at 11. That's the number of illumination. <laughs> but I thought, no, let's go to the master builder. Let's, yeah. let's go the, the whole distance. Now, some people accept 33 as a master number as well. It's debatable in numerology, but, you know, I may have to push it. If I leave 22, I'll have to work all the way up to 33. It's a, it's a lot of work, just kind of all at once, right, to, from, to make that leap. Um, yeah. So you have 22 uh, certificate, cert, oh boy, certification programs. Yes, yes. Uh, hypnosis, um, neurolinguistic programming. Uh, we also have numerology. Uh, we have we have a number of them business coaching life coaching and a lot of these have two or three levels and they're fairly big programs like the nlp program is 30 hours in total 10 hours for the uh practitioner 10 hours for master practitioner and then 10 hours for the trainer program so these are all of these when i say 22 you can actually multiply that by approximately 2.5 say between two and three levels so we have quite a few and they're and they're really big programs, and they're all designed to uh, launch people in careers. You know, with, you could take right. any of them and launch a whole career as a hypnotherapist, uh, NLP practitioner, or what have you. And, and do you have people that take all of them? We do. We had a sale recently where we uh, put them all on sale. We have some people who have all of them, and uh, they're wondering where to start. So uh, yeah, some people just work their way through them. Some people, you know, as we release new ones, they just sign up and they, they take that one too. Some people are just lifelong learners like myself. I mean, that's what I would do. I, I consider myself primarily a hypnotherapist. And then under that, I also, under that umbrella, I also have, you know, I'm trained as a life coach, business coach, uh, NLP practitioner. So I can use those other tools, but my primary tool and my primary uh, uh, preference is hypnotherapy. When you say you're a lifelong learner, do you like, like, like to uh, <clears throat> just like, like take time every day to just, uh, you know, study something or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cause I, I I'm uh, like kind of on the fence about that for myself. Right. As far as I, I like to, 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 to dive in and know enough about something and then just like kind of do it. You know, I'm, I'm a baptism by fire kind of guy and I, I there are fields that one doesn't do this right like brain surgery rocket science you don't just like you know what i want to go fly to the moon what do i need to know you know oh get some gasoline and a mat <laughs> and get a tube and a trash can turns upside down <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tube, should be good yeah. yeah i may have done that at like seven or eight I think um I not with myself in it but <laughs> no no the neighbor <laughs> hey the, the, yeah the neighbor <laughs> I'm a rocket scientist. Come here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, with, uh, with with certain things, it's like, um, you know, one has that freedom to to learn as they, they go. Uh, some some things you have to just dive into. You have to, um, you know, be in the mix of it where it's not just a, uh, a theoretical study, uh, you know, like um, like Tarot. You know, it's, it's, you know, you can learn the meanings of cards, but it's like until you like start talking with people and start, um, you know, building a, a rapport and all that, that it's, it's just, um, it, it can be a, uh, like a, a, a book knowledge kind of thing, but not a, mm -hmm. uh, like a life knowledge. So, um, so you like to, 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 to study and then w when do you give yourself permission to, to dive in? To... Well, I, I'm like you. I mean, trial by fire. Like, for example, some of the things I've learned recently are uh, JavaScript programming, uh, PHP programming, uh, CSS and HTML. These are all things that I could use on my website, stevegjones.com, when I redesigned it a few years ago. So I, what happened to me with the triggering event was I got charged like $4,000 for someone to redesign my website. After waiting a few months, they'd only done one page. 
I got so mad, I couldn't get my money back from them. They weren't giving it back. So, uh, and they were in another country. So I got so mad that I decided I'm going to learn all this stuff. So I did. So I hired uh, some of the best programmers I could find, which happened to be in Pakistan, by the way, if anyone wants to know where the best programmers are in the world who work at the, you know, a good price. Uh, don't hire an American, hire someone from Pakistan. India is probably second best. And I would just train with them every day. And I did this for a few years. And they, they, I said, show me all your secrets, show me how to do everything. So I did that uh, with them during the day. And afterwards, I would study the book knowledge. So I was applying it and building my website, building it out, learning how all these things work and making mistakes. So that's what I like to do. Rather than just, you know, so there's not a point where I study, 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 and okay, I'm competent enough to do it. I'm doing it as I go and making the mistakes. As you pointed out, you can't do that with rocket science or brain surgery, but you can do it with a website. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, I, I used to uh, build websites for uh, a company that I, I, I worked for when I was an art director and all that. And th there would be like, hundreds almost you know a thousand like uh items and all that so it, it's like you know one had to like uh really understand the basics before they they started like just buildings they didn't like royally screw up but um but with uh programming and stuff it's like if you if you're able to to do a little bit just so that you can um you know under understand the the fundament the fundamentals right and then just keep building on on that and um that, that's a that's a great way of doing it um it, it, you know i was, I was going to ask you oh because uh, on your instagram right like because uh I, I was looking at your your page there you're sitting there with a guitar mm. now, are you teaching yourself uh music too no i have studied music off and on throughout my life uh starting when i was about 12 and i was in summer camp and i had a guitar class as one of the uh you know, sleep over summer camp and yeah. every day we'd have guitar classes one of the classes but uh so it's been informal i don't currently own a guitar uh but i'm i'm on the verge of getting one and this this conversation is spurring me to uh to go ahead and make that happen uh and what i really want to do is uh start uh producing music that i think would be helpful to folks and so i'm going to uh go back at it and it's going to be like programming where I'm going to, you know, at first there's going to be some, uh, maybe some not so melodic tunes coming out, but uh, we'll work on that. Wait a sec. When you say not so melodic tunes, what, what, what do you mean by that? Is that by design or is it? <laughs> no, no, that's by, that's the trial by fire part. That's where I don't know how to sing very well yet. And I don't know, I don't really have a, I think I have what people call a tin ear where, uh, you know, I don't really hear, like people hear notes, oh, that's a G, or that's an E. Um, I don't really relate to all that. I, have to have I, a I don't know. I don't know. I can't read music. I mean, I have like 50 albums, but I I, I, I can't read okay. music. Oh, there yeah. you go. You inspired me then. So <laughs> yeah, good. if I can do it, you can do it, Steve. All right. I will. I will do it then. I'm on it. Thank you. I, I'm, what I'm what I'm like visualizing is is you like combining your music right you know like with uh with your programming but but steer yeah. steer clear from you know anything that disrupts a flow don't uh don't feel like you can just do a a, a soothing calm voice you're relaxing somebody and then you throw in like a a, a guitar lick you know you know yeah. because that that's just gonna like break the that that calming harmonious flow let me scratch that off the list here thank you thank you for uh you know what i am always happy to help all right that's, that's no, just me being of service no sudden riffs during, <laughs> this, during this relaxing part although it's like you know once you have that that captured audience you know it's like you know they can like really appreciate your musicianship it's like oh my god that 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 one's so much better than his earlier album he's improved yeah, exactly. There's always room for improvement. Or maybe I can, you know, hypnotize them to think that I'm amazing at, at guitar or whatever. You will think the next part is absolutely amazing. Uh, like, black, 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 black. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> I, I've I've played guitar for for many years, and I, I I just got to a certain level, and that's it. There there is no more improvement for me. And hey, some of the most successful 
bands in the world they they stick to you know some of them stick to just three chords it seems like i mean you don't uh i mean uh, maybe like george thorogood would be uh, an example there there are plenty of examples of musicians that uh aren't exactly conducting symphonies that are you know very successful yeah yeah it's like uh i i think that like in in all things one one finds their 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 gifts you know they they find kind of the those go-to places where it's like that's where i'm in the pocket you know i'm i'm not a virtuoso but uh but i can I can layer music. I, I know how to take frequencies and and balance them out. You know where you have your bass guitars, your your keyboards, and and they're they're not stepping on each other. They're not all in that same range. There, there's there's a, a dynamic, um, and so producing, you know that that kind of thing. That's uh, kind of more my forte than just being the uh, the, the brilliant musician. Okay, I didn't know that you were a producer, so maybe we should uh, we should talk at some point once I start. Hey, let, let's just turn out. this into a meeting, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, get the contract. <laughs> yeah, ready? I've got it right here. Um, yeah, I think that would be good because I'm going to need someone to make me sound good. So uh, right. if you can if you can do right. that, well, you are you are well, the wizard. You know, I and you know, it's like, uh, do you have a, a wizard certification program? No, but that's a great idea. Right. If we could do that. Uh, that could be another thing we could do together. And it's not just about beard length, right? It's not just, you know, it's like if it's you the, have, like, you know, it's, it's the, the beard length, I think, is is mental, as we've talked about earlier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that, Except that's in your what... case, it's also <laughs> physical. So I'm just trying to compensate for not having a beard. So I'm just saying that. But we all know that having a physical <laughs> one is better. <laughs> so um getting back to to that question of of like the, the 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 live the um you know conducting like live um digital seminars or so mm -hmm. is is that part of of the the training part of any of the trainings do you do you ever just do like ones with your your partners or anything like that um, if, well, I'll, I'll answer that question. I, I don't know if I'm answering the question you asked, but I'll answer what I, what I think you may be asking and it'll be informative nonetheless in, for example, the life coaching business certification, when we teach people on the third level, how to, how to train other life coaches, uh, we teach them how to do live trainings, live seminars. I don't think that's exactly what you're asking, but that's some information. I guess is that through a live seminar that you're actually doing that? Okay. To, no, to no, 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 no. No, no, no. We um, we we do what we what we teach our students to do, which is to train one time, make a recording of it, and that's it. So you don't have to keep on training. So we like we like the model of you know you you practice, you you get everything right, and you you train, you film it. It's however many hours, ten hours, thirty hours, whatever it is, yes. it's done. And it's out there. You don't have to, you know, do it every weekend. You know, God bless the people who like that, the people who like the crowds and all that. Like I said, I'm not one of them. So I teach people to be kind of like me so you can have a hermit life. Right. Um, you know, I, I find that I'm I like people in, in that respect as far as I it might be because I'm a, a Leo sun and moon. <laughs> gotta, have the, gotta have the worshipers around you. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, it, 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 there's just an energy of it, you know? And yeah, yeah, when, I when I'm in groups, I like to have a circle, like it, as opposed to the classroom style where, you know, everyone is facing you, you know, but uh, where, where potentially, you know, a student who's in the back is looking at the back of, of the head of, you know, those in front of them, rather than that meeting of eye to eye, there's a, there's a, a an equalizing type of energy when everyone's in a circle. It's like everyone sees each other, and in, in that they can see a part of themselves in that. And so I think that there's uh, a, a certain like like energetic uh, connection that that's made that is, uh, is is pretty amazing. I I think that's a wonderful thing. I mean, for someone who's going like yourself who is going to do live uh, seminars, I think to have that circle is is wonderful. I would say that I have the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, when someone's learning from me, it's just me 
uh, and them, except I'm on a computer screen like like we are now, and they're they're watching me. So it's it is a one on one. They're not looking at the back of anyone's head. Right. But uh, yeah, yours is more geared toward you as a people person. It's not that I dislike people. It's just that I'm I get a little stressed out by large crowds, and I'd rather you know not have to do that. Right. Well, you you have the the capacity to have like uh, a lot of people there. So if you were to like put everyone in a circle, it would be like, you know, like you, uh, they'd be looking in the back of their heads anyway, or the circle would be so wide they wouldn't be able to see me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Geometrically, it wouldn't work out too well. <laughs> You'd have no, to have know. like a, a lot of little circles there that you can just yes, kind of hop yes, into. They're all, and maybe they'd face each other or something. We'd have mirrors set up so they could face each other and see me. It would become very complex. We'd have to call an Elon Musk to engineer it, and it would be costly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like you, you might just end up on a screen anyway. You know, yeah, like yeah, we'd be right back to where we started. Jumbotron. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's the thing about Zoom, though, too. It's like in that classroom setting, even though it's like the, the Brady Bunch or Hollywood Squares, you know, type of classrooms, you know, mm -hmm. it's still uh, people are facing one, one another. It's like they're able to mm -hmm. kind of see see what's going on. It's it's uh, it's it's a really interesting dynamic. And, and as a teacher slash facilitator of of information and experience. It's, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of, of just the, the live experience, too. And, and it's, you know, for, for what you're, you're doing, it's amazing. And, you know, so many people get uh, a value of, of what, what it is that, that you're sharing. And, and they're able to take that information and, and build on that for, for a career and all. How, what, what does one usually start with, you know, with, with your certification? Like, I, I don't know if there's a usual, it kind of depends on what your goal is. Like, as I was mentioning earlier, I'm a hypnotherapist primarily and everything is, yeah. a, is under that umbrella, life coaching, business coaching, NLP and all that. But you could easily, you know, flip that around if you want to be an NLP practitioner and mainly use NLP. Well, you know, everyone's going to have to have life coaching uh, experience at some point because there's some point you're going to sign homework to someone, to a client, and they're not going to do it. And you're going to think, oh, what do I do? I send them to the room or this is a grown up I'm dealing with. And so having life coaching experience is helpful for that. Business coaching, when you're working with someone and they're, they're not producing what they, they're not meeting their goals because they're just not doing what they're, what you've told them to do. Uh, you've got to know how to work with that. So business coaching comes into play. So they all kind of help each other and you could use any of them with any of the others at any time. Uh, so it really just depends on how you want to define yourself. And for people who are undefined, I recommend, you know, just to like John Travolta in Greece, you know, try all the different athletics and see how you do. And uh, if, if nothing works out, that's fine. But chances are you'll find something that you like more than the others. That can be your umbrella that you put everything else underneath. I like that. I like that where one, uh, you know, finds what, what they, they want to do and they, they kind of create the, the menu then for it. And I didn't know that was a part of Greece. I, I don't yeah. remember that part. Yeah. Yeah. He was primarily a uh, life coach and he did NLP and business coaching <laughs> and uh, life coaching underneath that. I don't know. A lot of people just completely miss that part. They, they thought it was about uh, some romance and singing or something. Greece was about right. John Travolta being a life coach and using NLP, business coaching, and uh, hypnosis and other things. Yeah. Well, well, tell me more, Steve. Tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> uh, this, could get really, uh, this could get really rough. <laughs> well, we were talking about the summer love and duet that we did that we call the OM uh, hypnosis recordings. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's We're right. It's all about Greece here. That's 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 what we do. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I, I take it that that's like one of your favorite movies. Uh, well, I did see it at a very impressionable age. I think I was 10 or something when I saw it. And uh, yeah, so I I don't know if it's one of my favorite movies as I look back on it now with more uh, of an overview uh, and more of a you know, fully developed uh, uh, brain as an adult, as, as we get after we uh, pass the age of 25 or so. But uh, as a kid, it made a big impression on me. That and Star Wars, the original 1977 
Star Wars, but uh, not sure they would now. Well, I mean, there, there, there's like such a, a, a glut of, uh, you know, movies that are like superhero movies, right? They're the ones that are uh, pretty, pretty action packed. Um, they'd be hard to, to compete, you know, against like, uh, you know, like effects wise and stuff like that. Anything that can be thought of can be done in, in movies today and, and done incredibly well. But uh, do, do you think that there's a... Um, like an underlying theme there with, uh, you know, do, do we need like so many like movies where, where people are, are rising up into uh, a sense of like uh, overcoming some kind of villainy or, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's like th there's most of the messaging behind it is where, you know, people are having to, to just rise up and, and, uh, and fight, you know, for, for something. It, do you think that that's a um, just kind of a, a passing part of our, our culture right now, or is it? Uh, is there something that I mean? Are are, are people like frustrated? Are they? Uh, uh, is there like this buildup of of pressure within people that they're they're looking to kind of blow off steam that some of the the other um, things that they would do before? weren't aren't working like sports or whatever where it's like yeah and you know everyone gets into that that crazy fandom and it, it's like it's a it's like a, a release valve that that you know people can get into and and just like blow off steam you think that uh, our entertainment is like that too yeah well i i take perhaps what we might call a more cynical look um i believe that they're selling us what we'll buy and i think we're wired to uh to relate to that the hero's journey you know we want to improve our condition i think that's an ongoing theme through the various epochs is epochs the plural of epoch or is or do we not just put an s at the end of it i think you just made up a word epochs Can E epochs, epochs, e e epochs, epochs. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, and sports are the same way. The sports and movies, sports and superhero movies are the same way. Either way, you're sitting on a couch watching somebody else do all the work, thinking that somehow you're accomplishing something. So uh, I, I never have, as you may be able to tell, I've never enjoyed watching sports because it's like, I mean, I, I'd much rather watch someone go through medical school. That seems like far more of an accomplishment than watching someone move a ball down the field. I, I don't really gain anything from that. Um, well, either way, I wouldn't gain anything from watching someone else's achievements. But uh, yeah. but there's there's an inspiration factor. Yeah. And that's it. And that's the end. And, and oh, so go, going back to the whole thing. So these folks are not you know, they're not creating movies or sports teams because they're good people and they want to inspire the world. They're doing it to get money and they, they want more money and they want more power. And that's why they're doing it. And each of everyone involved in it is doing it for either money or fame, not to, uh, you know, not to uh, inspire others. They're all doing it for that chemical reward in their brain. So, and that's just part of the way we're wired. So um, I, I think that, uh, Hollywood as a business will continue producing things that it thinks will uh, get more money to them and more fame to everyone. And uh, movies, movie producers will do the same. But there is hope. There are music producers like yourself who do want to, you know, that's a different realm, I think, when you get into, you know, music. Now you want to do something that's more uh, you know, helpful to the world and just, you know, this feel a good thing and all that. And uh, well, I think one of the reasons for that is there's not this big, uh, you know, you don't have to have a bunch of investors in it. When you get a bunch of investors in something, you know, like a football team or a feature film, you know, they all want, they all want to be paid. When you have a, an independent producer, well, you know, there's not that kind of pressure. So you don't have to sell out as it were. Yeah, I, you know, I, I always felt that that music had a different function anyway than like a, a more like, uh, like sensory uh, overloading type of, you know, a thing like a, a film or something where, where it demands all of your attention, you know, like watching a movie, a TV show, it, it demands that you like sit there, you're absorbed, you, you, you sit on the couch, right? You like, um, you're, you're, you're in your comfort zone there and you're, you're watching all this, this stuff that's transpiring where music 
is is a soundtrack to one's life and you can be doing other things to that you can be uh you know doing carpentry you can be you know uh crafting you can be painting you know and and uh, and have music as that that background that's uh an inspiration or it's it's helping kind of set the the, the emotional mood or so and um i think that it has a, a different place in, um, in in inspiring us and, and all to, uh, you know, get into our own natural abilities, our own gifts. And, uh, and, and so I, I, I take a, a less like cynical approach towards, towards music, certainly not just because I, I like it and have been able to, to create it, but, but it's not so absorbing in you know you don't have to just sit there and listen to it you can you can do stuff you can drive you can you know hike you can do do anything you want to it i agree with that my you know my cynicism is reserved for you know the big money things like uh the sports teams and feature films but you know we do get a little bit into, into that in music because you have this pop music that's produced and the the idea is you know, these guys with a bunch of money get together and they say, who can we find? OK, that person. Uh, what, what do people want to let's take a survey, find out what people want to hear. All right, they want to hear stuff about this. Let's produce it. How cheaply can we do it? You know, let's get it done. Let's get it out there through our distribution channels. So uh, there, there is some cynicism that I do reserve for pop music that's produced just to make money. But the type of music that you're producing, the type of music that I'm interested, you know, I'm not cynical about that at all, because that is, uh, I think, as close to from the heart as as one can get in their art creation. Yeah, well, I look forward to hearing what it is that you're creating. And all. So I do, too. I mean, that's, it. well, that's one of my challenges. I've got to find my voice. I've got to find out, you know, I know I have things to say, but I've got to kind of streamline that into a musical presentation. So, yeah, you may hear some things you like. Uh, Steve, I'm not saying it's bad, but maybe you want to do this, you know, so I'll look forward to some feedback early on and all throughout. Awesome. It, maybe, uh, you know, use your uh, uh, hypnosis script as your lyrics. And uh... hey, that could be a, that could be a, you know, an easy way out. Yeah. That's yeah. That's something that could be good. Talking my hypnotic voice and all that. Yeah. Right. Right. It's, uh, you know, I've, I've heard of, of uh, weirder things than that, you know. Uh, it's, it's about that which works. There you go. There you go. And as long as it's authentic, which that clearly would be, then we're clear for takeoff. So, so we're uh, coming down the, the pike here as far as uh, uh, closing out this, uh, this episode of Transformations with, with Tara Sutphin, who is on some wild adventure, I'm sure, having a great time. I Sagittarius. I'm one too, so I know the deal. Yeah. Right. You never yeah. know where we're going to end up. So it's it's been a lot of fun rapping with you, and uh, we, we have to do it more often. And uh, probably will if, if I'm like listening to your music and, and having to give you some, some critical notes. Yes, yes. In a, in a gentle, loving way. Always. All right. Always. I'm not here to, to squash your spirit, but to, you to look up, lift you up. Source. What are things, what are things in the, the source that means sucks, but aren't as harsh? <laughs> I'll, I'll be hearing a lot of room for improvement type comments. So, so your website is stevegjones.com. And I have a hypnosis audio there for you. It's for unlimited wealth. It's yes. Yeah designed to uh bring out that gift you have you know whatever it is that you have inside i'll probably be listening to it myself but the idea is that you can bring it out and monetize it. you know so if you have if if you have something that you want to bring out and monetize of course i look at monetization as just a scoreboard you know if if people are willing to buy it and it's probably got some value to it so the unlimited wealth hypnosis audio at stevegjones.com is free it's an hour long listen to it every night for 21 nights as you go to sleep you miss a few nights or fall asleep while listening to it, that's fine. And let it program you to bring out that screenplay or that music or, you know, whatever it is that's inside of you that you can bring out and share with the world and be compensated for it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, my website, Jason D. McKean, J-A-S-O-N-D-M-C-K-E-A-N.com. And it has my one book. I, I still have to write 21 just to catch up to... Oh. Uh, 
to can, your 22. I can coach you on that while you coach me on that. Right. Singing and stuff. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Dr. Jones, all best. Blessings to you and in your, your family. And uh, uh, I, I will I will see you. Thank you so much for being on Transformations. Thank you, Jason. My love to you and Tara. And uh, thank you guys for being so inspirational in my life. All right. Blessings.